Mirrors can also be either converging or diverging. We have to be a little bit careful because a concave mirror refers to its shape. A concave mirror has this little hole, looks like a cave. However, a concave, mirroring is a concave mirror is a converging mirror. A convex mirror is a diverging mirror. Again, we call it converging because parallel rays that hit the mirror will be focused down and will all uh, converge to a point. We call that point the focal point. For a diverging mirror, mirror, parallel rays will diverge. They will appear that they came from a point right here. The point that they appear to have come from, we call that the focal point. Again, notice the mirrors only have one focal point, whereas lenses had two focal points. The three sets of special rays for a concave mirror look like this. One ray comes in parallel to the optical axis and gets reflected back through the focal point. If we were to reverse these arrows, the same thing holds. Any ray that emerges from the focal point, or rather I should say goes through the focal point on its way to the mirror, will be reflected off parallel to the optical axis. And one ray through the center will bounce off with the angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection. Okay, so again, three rays. It, uh, we can think of them as different because they're mirrors, but man, I mean, I think it's easiest to think of them as the same rays that we've already learned about. One ray comes in parallel, one ray leaves parallel, and one ray is, well, it's not quite undeflected, but it comes out at the same angle as it went in. Here are a list of steps for a concave mirror. Again, we're going to draw our optical axis. Again, we're going to mark our focal point. Mirrors only have one focal point. We'll represent the object with an upright arrow at an image distance s. Okay, so this is the same, very similar. Now we draw our three special rays. Again, one ray comes in parallel, one ray emerges parallel, and one ray goes through the center. Well, and if it hits the center of the mirror, it will be reflected at an angle that is equal to the angle of incidence. Again, we extend the rays until they converge, and we measure the distances and answer some questions. Um, here's a, a quick Ray tracing, again, of the infinite number of rays that are leaving this object, we have drawn seven. Of those seven, the three are our special rays. One hits the mirror parallel to the optical axis and bounces off through the focal point. One ray goes through the middle and bounces off with the angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection. And one ray goes through the focal point and then bounces off parallel to the optical axis. Notice that when I'm doing my nice ray tracing, we have all of the reflection happen right at this line, not at the surface of the mirror. We've just sketched the mirror here to uh, help us uh, visualize the situation. This is the thin lens approximation. Okay, here we have a converging or concave mirror. Let's draw our optical axis. Draw our mirror in here somewhere. Something like that. And let's mark our focal point. It has a focal length of 40 centimeters. Let's go ahead and let one square equals five centimeters. So we're gonna have one square equals five centimeters. So our focal point then will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right here. And it says our object is held 20 centimeters in from the mirror. So 20 centimeters then would be four squares. One, two, three, four. There's where my mascara brush is gonna be. And we can have a different scale on the vertical axis than we have on the horizontal axis. And I am just going to go ahead and make this two. Okay. Great. So, uh, again, one ray has to head in parallel. So it heads in towards the mirror parallel. And once again, much like we did with the lenses, we're going to have all of our refraction happening 
right here at this line. And I've just drawn that shape of the mirror to help us visualize it. All of the reflection will happen right at that line. Okay, so one ray, the first ray heads in parallel to the optical axis. It bounces off of the mirror and then it will go back through the focal point. One ray emerges parallel. Hmm. Well, if it's going to emerge parallel, it has to appear to have come from this focal point. So I'm going to put my ruler here. But of course, the, the, the light just emits, this ray emits from, from my object, not from the focal point. So I'm lining it up with the focal point. It's going to head away from the object. Since it appears like it came from that focal point, it's going to bounce off parallel to the optical axis. One ray hits the middle and bounces off with angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. Um, these rays do not converge. Therefore, this is definitely a virtual image. At this point, we can say, hey, it must be upright too, because in single lens or mirror systems, Virtual images are always upright. Let's confirm that though. We're going to dash, dash, dash this backwards. We're going to dash, dash, dash this one backwards. And this one. And we see that they come to a point right about here is where they come. Well, cool. Let's see. We did get upright. It is virtual because the light doesn't actually come from here. Notice that this image is four squares tall. My object is only two squares tall. So my magnification is the ratio of the image height over the object height. My magnification is two positive two because my image is upright. For our, our diverging or convex mirror, we have the three sets of special rays. Again, we have one that comes in parallel to the optical axis, one that goes out parallel to the optical axis, and one where the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Similar set of steps. One ray comes in parallel, one ray emerges parallel and one ray goes through the middle with angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. Again, we're going to have uh, we're going to have virtual images here. So this is going to be a situation where we have to do the little dash 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 our lines back to see where they appear to come from. Here's our nice drawing of the infinite number of rays that come off of this object. Here are seven, our three special rays, one comes in parallel, one emerges parallel, and one bounces off the center with angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. Uh, this one actually, I think this one's pretty tricky um, because no ray ever goes through the focal point. So we always have to remember that they have to appear to come from the focal point, right? So, so this one here, this ray comes in parallel and it bounces off. How does it bounce off? It appears to come from this focal point as if it was coming from that focal point. This ray right here, if it's going to come off parallel to the optical axis, then it has to head as if it was going to the far focal point, and then it bounces off parallel to the optical axis. I kind of think this is the trickiest of the four. We still have these equations. Um, these work for concave, convex, mirror, or lens. These equations still hold. Uh, we still have our S and our S prime. Again, the sign conventions of those can get a little bit tricky. We'll talk more about that in just a second. This is the convex mirror, like the passenger side rear view mirror on a car. It has a focal length of 2 meters, and an object is 4 meters from the mirror. Let's see what this ends up looking like. Okay, there's our optical axis. Let's draw our mirror.
There's my mirror. Now remember that mirrors only have one focal point. And so for a diverging mirror, it will be behind the mirror. Uh, let's create a scale. Let's say that 10 squares equals two meters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's my focal point right there. And then we have an object that's two meters away. It's four meters away, excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right there. And let's go ahead and make him two, four. We'll make it six tall. Okay. There we go. Um, first ray heads in parallel to the optical axis. So that's going to go like this. Now it is a diverging mirror, so it's going to reflect this ray away from the optical axis. Something like that. Our second ray leaves the mirror parallel to the optical axis. So it's going to head towards that focal point and then bounce off the mirror. And one ray bounces off the center with an angle of incidence equal to an angle of refraction. Let's see. It'll be right there, I guess. Now I do not converge, so definitely a virtual image. Let's see where they appear to come from. A little bit harder with the Sharpie than it would be with a pencil, but that's okay. And it looks like, indeed, it's coming from right about there. Okay, great. So it is upright. It is a virtual image. What's the magnification? Well, magnification is equal to h prime over h. That's about 2, and that's about 6. Positive means it's upright and about one third the size. So this is interesting. Um, this is the passenger side mirror of your car, which if you'll recall, this is the one that says objects in mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> so um, that's actually a big fat lie. The image in a rear view mirror is actually closer. It's just greatly reduced. So your brain perceives it as being farther away. Uh, here is the thin lens equation. I had said that we can do these, solve these problems either using algebra or using some drawings. And so the thin lens equation allows us to do a little bit of algebra here. Here we see the focal length. Here we see the image distance. And here this is the object distance. This works for lenses or mirrors. And it's fairly straightforward. The real tricky part are the sign conventions. The sign conventions are quite tricky. And so we're always going to set up our lenses and mirrors such that the object is on the left side. And we'll show our light leaving the object and heading to the right. That makes our object distances always positive. We just won't treat negative object distances for one single lens and single mirror systems in this chapter. We just won't deal with that. Now, image distance can be a little bit tricky. I think of this as like our standard situation. I expect light to pass through a lens and show up on the far side. I expect light to bounce off and show up on the near side. So this is sort of like what I think of as the standard situation. So for a lens, an image distance on the right side is positive, but for a mirror, an image distance on the left side is positive. For a lens, an image on the left side is negative, whereas for a mirror, an image on the right side is negative. 
Let's jump down to magnification. If the image is inverted, that is a negative magnification. And if the image is upright, that is a positive magnification. Notice that virtual images are always negative, real images are always positive. Focal length uh, is fairly straightforward. A diverging lens or mirror is negative. A converging lens or mirror is positive. Let's go ahead and solve this one using algebra. We already did a drawing solution of it. Let's go ahead and use some algebra and see if our conclusions don't match. We've got the concave cosmetic mirror. It has a focal length of 40 centimeters. So we have F equals 40 centimeters. Let's make sure it is concave. Remember that concave mirrors are converging. So positive focal length is correct. Um, Five centimeters long, that's the height of our object. H equals five centimeters. Um, and it's held upright 20 centimeters in front of the mirror. So S is 20 centimeters. Now our thin lens equation is one over F equals one over S plus one over S prime. I'm looking for S prime. So what I want to do is I want to bring my one over S over. Now I can find a common denominator. And finally, solve for S prime by flipping both sides over. And let's just plug in numbers. S prime equals S, which was 20 centimeters, times F, which was 40 centimeters, over S minus F. So that's 20 centimeters minus 40 centimeters. And notice what we get when we do that. We get negative 40 centimeters. So our S prime is negative. What does that mean? Well, for a mirror, that means that it is behind the mirror. So we have a, a concave mirror. This means that the image is behind the mirror. And it's the negative sign that tells us that. It's the negative sign that tells us that this image appears behind the mirror. Now, what is the magnification? Well, we know that the magnification is negative S prime over S. So let's see what that is. The magnification is equal to negative S prime over S. Well, in this case, then, this is negative 40, negative of negative 40, rather, centimeters, divided by 20 centimeters. So we get a magnification of 2. That's exactly what we got when we did our ray tracing. With a magnification of 2, that tells us that h prime equals 2 times h. 2 times 5 centimeters is 10 centimeters. Okay, uh, what else? A positive magnification tells us that our image will be upright. Uh, an upright image is virtual. A negative image distance is also virtual. So it all kind of jives, right? The, uh, the drawing and the algebra reach the exact same conclusion.